Hello. Today I thought I'd actually show you one of my favourite arrangements that I often use for demonstrating. And it's a contemporary design with the influence of the technique hedging. And to start with I've actually started to make a screen or a hedge using the Smithers Oasis copper wire mesh which I have cut so that I have six squares by four squares. I've used a 1.8 gauge wire, taped it and then secured it to one side with paper covered wire and then repeated the process on the other side. I've then made a smaller uh, little mesh uh, structure which is uh, measures four squares by three squares and repeated the process of attaching it. And having used um, my floral foam, I'm now going to insert the second structure into the floral foam like so. So it sits there quite nicely. And I'm going to work with steel grass because it's a lovely piece of lime material. And I'm going to take certain four to five strands of uh, steel grass at a time, making sure that all the uh, base of the steel grass is level. And then through each of the columns, I'm just going to weave my steel grass so that it has the same pattern of weaving for each of the columns. I'm just evening out now my steel grass and I'm leading it down. And then I'm just going to insert it into the floral foam so it sits nice and straight and I'm pushing it in nice and deeply because it's not really hot at the moment and I know that the top surface of the floral foam will dehydrate. And then I take my second set of placements, get those so that they're level two, and I can change really the way I'm going to weave so that there's a, an interesting little pattern only if you actually look very closely at the actual design itself. So that sits there like so. And I'm just going to repeat the process so that uh, each of my columns has got a lovely selection of woven steel grass just to give that lovely emphasis of that hedge technique. So I'm just pushing them through, bringing them down. And what I'm trying to do is to make sure that they do appear to be reasonably in line with each other so that we create a, a nice solid hedge. So I'm going to take the last of my steel grass Again, make sure that the bottoms are all level and just weave. And you may find that this is the hardest one to weave because obviously the actual structure has less pliability because you've actually got the strength of all that steel grass just sitting there like so. So I've now got the gap between them so that we've got some depth. I've positioned all my steel grass together. But what I want to do is to have it at slightly different height levels. So I'm just going to gather up the steel grass at the top give it a blunt cut and then with the remaining grass again create a third little hedge so that that sits towards the front again just hold it so all the tips are the same and then just cut and then I've got just a little, little sort of uh, idea of three different heights of my steel grass now I'm using a container that I've had for ages. It's one, you know, the sort of thing you do where you have you go and buy a container, you never know what to do with it. And I just thought that this would actually lend itself quite nicely. But there's a big gap between the floral foam and the container, and I need to hide it. So I'm actually going to work with the Livingston palm. And I really like this particular palm. I love the colour, the lime green. I love the actual uh, rotund shape that it has. It has this lovely, lovely texture of slightly pleated looking um, leaf structure, which I feel is quite attractive. It also has a very woody stem, so it's very, very easy to actually arrange. And I'm actually going to insert it at an acute diagonal angle. So it's actually starting to hide the top surface of the floral foam very, very easily. And I'm just going to repeat the process by inserting my, my palm so it's starting to hide the uh, gap and just lead that through. And then I'm just going to put my final of my Livingston palm and that's just going to sit towards the back and it's going in at an angle so that it gives a little bit of height and depth to the design. Now there's still some key areas that need to be disguised. So I'm going to work now with a dark green leaf, lovely palmate leaf of the Faxia japonica. And I really, really love this leaf. This is one of my favourite foliages. And uh, again, what I want to do is just to add this to the design 
so that it sits and hides the gap. So now we're starting to really find that our mechanics are really getting well and well truly hidden very, very quickly. So I'm going to place one towards the back and then have one um, nearer to the actual front as well. So let's just put the back one in. So that just sits there like so. Slightly lower than the actual palm leaf. And then my third fatsia leaf is just going to sit and nestle in there so that we have that sort of overlap which I think looks rather attractive. And really I feel that with those, those six leaves that's quite enough really to actually then create the parameters of the design. But I do need to have some filler material and I desperately need to hide the gap between the, the top hedge and the second hedge. And so I've got two different types of foliages really so that they have a little bit more textural contrast. So I've just got a little bit of garden pine and then I'm going to work with another of my favourite foliages which is the choice here, Tanata. And I want to work with that one because it has a lovely rosette shape. So I'm just going to add this to the design, very low down. I want the eye to be led into the design and then the, the eye then be led up towards the actual um, structures of the hedge. So I am going to place this down very, very low into the floral foam. And I really am putting the stems quite deeply into the foam because I really need to make sure that they are able to take up the water that will sink to the bottom. So I've put my little placements of my choice here in, but now I'm just going to work with my actual pine material. And I think that the needles of the pine are really just going to help to enhance the design. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got my placements of my fascia and my lovely Livingston palm correctly. And because I just want that part, that little bit of pine, just to nestle between the two to actually break them up so that we have a, a lovely little key area of the actual pine. So that's going to sit there. I want to add just a small bit towards the back. So I'm just going to add this. Obviously all the stems are being cut at a 45 degree angle so that they go nicely into the floral foam. So I've got my two placements, a little bit higher towards the back just to give a bit of depth uh, to the actual design itself. And for a contemporary design, I really feel that you only need to have one type of flower, but it has to be dramatic. And so what I decided to do was to work with the gorgeous calla lily. And I love the calla lily because not only has it got such an exotic looking trumpet, lovely triangular shape, but it's got these gorgeous stems which just have that lovely lime green look. And what I want to do is to place the material so that they really just live to one side. Now calla lilies are slightly harder to work with, especially if they are a little bit old. These are nice and fresh, but what I've done, just to make sure that it's much, much easier to arrange, I'm just actually using a blunt cut. So rather than cutting the stems at a 45 degree angle, I'm doing a straight cut and then I'm able to then have the, the strength of the stem directly be inserted into the floral foam. What I also need to do is to make sure that I do have the same sort of curve just flowing through. So by using your thumb and your fingers just to actually support the stem, you stroke the stem to actually then get to that curve that you need. Now I need to have these at different height levels and to make sure that I've actually get them so that they're correct height, I'm actually going to turn the actual head upside down, work out where I want the top of the flower to be, add on about an inch, do my blunt cut and then what I can do is then just insert that into the floral foam like so. So that sits there like so and you can see that I'm gradually going to lead the eye slightly out so that we have a nice curve which is going to contrast I believe quite nicely with our hedge structure of our steel grass. So I'm just going to then do my third placement. What I've tried to do is to make sure that I have a nice clear gap of floral foam so that it's very, very easy to insert my materials into. So where I felt that there wasn't going to add any more materials, that was the time that I then decided that I would uh, um, then create my actual blocking or bedding 
of my base materials really just to help to enhance the design. So as this curves out like so, I now need to create a focal point area and my focal is going to sit just there. So with the focal flowers I've selected ones that are large so that we have the larger flowers go towards the centre and I really have had to concentrate a lot on making the stems so that they do curve because I don't need them to curve. I just need them to sit nicely in the design. But I need a bit of weight of these calla lilies. So I'm just going to put a cluster of three in the arrangement down low, really just to help to emphasize that focal area. So I'm just actually placing them. But what I want to do as well is to make sure that there's always space between the flowers. Space between flowers means that each of the flowers are shown off for their own beauty and also it makes it a far more commercial design. So I'm just going to add the final focal flower and I've got the fatsia leaf is just sitting near to where I want it to be. So I've just used the stem of the pie just so that I can create a hole sufficiently large enough to actually then get my calla lily in. So that sits there like so. But I want to leave the eye round. So I'm going to position some calla lilies just to the side. So I've selected one and I've just got a nice curve on that one as well so that it, it just sort of curves round. So again, a nice blunt cut so that I can insert that in and then push that in for a good inch so that sits there like so and then I obviously have got a gap just here that I really need to work with too so I'm going to take another calla lily and what I'm trying to do is to get the direction of the calla lilies all facing the same way so that there's no sort of competition between the actual positioning so I'm just going to add that in there like so that's a little bit too long so I'm just going to cut that down lift up my fatsia leaf and then just place that in there like so. so that's the ninth flower that I've actually put into the design. So now I just want to finish off placing my tenth flower in and I'm just going to clear the decks a little bit and work with the final colour lily which again is going to have a blunt cut. And what I want to do is just to make sure that it just helps to follow that line through. So I'm just going to add it so it goes underneath the final fatsia and uh, the Washington palm. I just want to get it so that it sits nicely just there like so. And I think, oh, well, I'm hoping that you'll see that it's a really attractive design which demonstrates the hedging technique. Now I've created this design which is actually within my new book. 50 techniques used in contemporary floral designs. And my book really just gives you an idea of the different uh, designs that you can do with regard to the techniques that are listed both for uh, with NAFAS and for floristry. And I've given my own little instruction on my idea of what the technique actually means. So I'm hoping that people will find this a very useful resource, especially if they're wanting to do a lot of design work or they're actually learning either floristry or flower arranging. Obviously you can have a look at my website where I can show you a range of different courses that are on offer, both for floristry and for flower arranging. And there are other um, videos on there of me showing you different techniques of ways of creating designs. So I'm hoping that uh, you've enjoyed my um, demonstration. This uh, is uh, very sunny, but gosh, did we have a bit of lightning just a little bit early on. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Thank you.